Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is April 20th. It, happy Tuesday. And you know, San Antonio is a growing city mm -hmm. all around. The suburbs are growing, the expansion, they're growing downtown, they're growing out, even up into Comel County and up near Bernie. A lot and of if growth. You, you've asked the wildlife, they would tell you we're invading <laughs> their space. Yes, we're moving in on them. But yeah. Texas Parks and Wildlife sending out a reminder to everyone saying do not touch the wildlife. Yes. <laughs> Especially this time of year when we know the little deer being born and a lot of the other little animals are, are coming to life. So if you see what you think is an mm -hmm. injured or maybe an abandoned animal, a little baby, then leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is an article on KSET.com if you want to read further into it. It's, Texans might notice more wildlife in their backyards, neighborhoods, and surrounding areas, kind of like David was talking about. So experts are warning potential do-gooders against lending a helping hand. So here's a quote. It says, species including birds, deer, and snakes are active this time of year, and their young often stray or appear to be abandoned. So that's according to the news release. Yeah, and they say staying too close may deter the mother from returning turning so be sure to practice your social distancing mm -hmm. I don't know that you have to wear a mask around the animal but you need to social distance around the animal <laughs> and you just uh, kind of like stay away and see what happens yeah sometimes there are abandoned animals and sometimes there are some injured ones but but most of the time the mom is just off looking for some food or or just, you know, leaving the baby alone for just a minute. Just for a minute. Yeah, yeah so, so this article, you can also get a number here. It says if you think that an animal is sick or injured, you have some numbers to call. Uh, it's area code 512 389 4505, but again, you can find all these numbers on KSET.com. And we show a picture of a deer, but there's a lot of animals out there. And if you're kind of new to South Texas and you're just moving into one of these neighborhoods where you think it's just a regular old neighborhood, nah, mm -hmm. if there's any green space near you, there's no telling what you'll see. Yeah, so <laughs> just be careful out just there. Just be ready. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. The fate of Derek Chauvin is now in the hands of a Minnesota jury. This after the panel heard nearly five hours of closing arguments from prosecutors and the former police officer's defense attorney. Officials in cities across the country have begun taking steps to prepare for the outcome in the trial. The judge in the Chauvin trial has denied a defense motion for a mistrial. The defense team had an issue with comments made by Democratic Representative Maxine Waters from California after she called for protesters to, quote, get more confrontational if there is not a guilty verdict. The judge said the opinion of a member of Congress does not matter in this case. The Biden administration has abruptly closed a detention center in Houston, housing hundreds of unaccompanied migrant girls. Just 17 days after opening, the facility closed after multiple allegations, including understaffing and no outdoor space. Border Patrol agents rescued two kids who were trying to cross the Rio Grande into Texas. The children told authorities they were separated from their parents in Mexico and were abandoned on the riverbank. The White House is starting a $150 million push to help more Americans get a COVID-19 vaccine. The focus is on helping vulnerable populations access the shot. That's just over 50% of the U.S. adult population has had at least one shot. Meanwhile, here in Bexar County, local health officials reported 119 new cases of COVID-19, no new deaths. The seven-day rolling average is now at 172 cases per day, and the positivity rate is 2.2%. More than 7,000 ballots were cast yesterday, the first day of early voting. The race for San Antonio mayor, city council, and several propositions are on the 2021 ballot. Election day is May 1st. Let's talk money. Worldwide, consumers have saved an extra $5.4 trillion since the pandemic. This comes as people were not able to spend money on travel, dining, or entertainment. Apple is hosting its first product event of 2021 today. The company is expected to announce new products and the new iOS is expected to help launch new privacy features. That will allow users to opt in to other apps harvesting and selling personal data. And that's today's 9 at 9. I'm interested in Apple's AirTags because I lose everything. It's supposed to help you keep track of everything. things. Yeah, and I think that like would be... keys? Yes, that would be helpful. <laughs> For me, at least. <laughs> All right, live cam. What's it look like outside? Uh, it's still in the 50s, and it's 9 o'clock in the morning, so that's a good sign.
but you know, at some point it's going to get hot. It's going to get hot this afternoon, but it's warming up because I mean, it was chilly this morning. We were in the 40s across parts of the hill country. We got in the 40s here in Bear County too. So this is uh, really an improvement. Now we're sitting in 61. Just shows you how fast these temperatures are warming up as we speak. West Northwest really winds at about three miles per hour. Dew point is low. The air is dry. That's why you're going to see sort of a rapid change in temperatures. We'll get into the 80s a little bit later this afternoon. 84 here in town, 73 by 8 o'clock, then we're down to 60 by 11 o'clock. By that time, cold fronts coming through. We got gusty winds and it cools down tomorrow morning. Uh, here's sort of the change. 84 today, about 5 o'clock. By the time we get into tomorrow morning, 45 with some wind chills. You'll need a, a nice sized coat tomorrow morning, I think. Be a little bit of a shock with those gusty winds out of the north. Pollen count is in. Molds, oak, still moderate, but they're down from where they were yesterday. So we're headed in the right direction. Pecan is low. And your forecast today, again, close to 84. Southwest Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. So we have our front coming through this evening. Doesn't bring us any rain. But another system behind that on Friday just may bring us some thunderstorms. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out there with TransGuide. Yes, the sun is shining, shining right now. There's I-10 at Callahan. Things running smoothly right now. Top stories we are following this morning. A man is in the hospital after he was shot in the hand overnight. Police tell us a man walked outside his home to tell two people who are arguing to be quiet. And that's when one of the men pulled out a gun and shot him. It happened just before 11 last night in the 2400 block of West Magnolia Avenue. That's near West Woodland Avenue and Wilson Boulevard. Police tell us the two men ran off after the shooting and have not been found yet. Meantime, the victim was taken to a nearby hospital for his injuries. He's expected to recover. The investigation is ongoing. A woman is recovering in the hospital after she drove off an elevated section of 1604. Police tell us a woman fell asleep at the wheel. It happened around 5 this morning at Loop 1604 and Stone Oak Parkway. Police say she was the only one in the car, and when police found her, she was alert and they were talking to her. She was taken to a nearby hospital, but right now it's not clear if she has any serious injuries. Officers shut down the turnaround lane during the investigation, but it had since reopened. San Antonio police need your help solving a murder. It happened just before 2.30 in the morning last Monday, the 12th. It happened in the 600 block of East Evergreen Street. The victim was riding a bike before he was shot by the suspect. If you have any information that can lead to an arrest, you're asked to call the San Antonio Police Department's homicide unit, that number 210-207-7635. And happening today, the San Antonio water system issuing stage two of water restrictions effective today. This comes as the Edwards Aquifer is sitting at a pretty low level. That means you will only be able to use sprinklers to water your grass once a week on your assigned day. Those days are determined by the last number of your address. You will only be able to wash your car on Saturday or Sunday. Nobody is allowed to wash off parking lots, streets, driveways, or sidewalks, and your pool must be at least 25% shaded. Officials say it is not a reason to panic, but the restrictions should be taken seriously. But we don't want you to be worried that water is ever going to stop coming out of that faucet. That's just not happening in San Antonio. And when we moved out here, we noticed, hey, it's a desert out here. <laughs> so conserving water is huge out here, especially in the San Antonio heat, and uh, very necessary. Member officials say you can hand water your grass at any time on any day. If you are caught violating the rules, you may receive a citation to see all the rules or report a violation. All you have to do is visit our website. This story right there on KSET.com. In your morning headlines, a historic moment NASA engineers are calling a dream come true. A dramatic rescue caught on camera and how you can be the next owner of an entire town. RJ Marquez joins us live in the studio with those stories and more. Would you name that town after yourself? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, you know what? I would. Might as well. <laughs> if you're going to spend the money, yeah. which it costs, you'll see here in a bit. You probably want to name it after yourself. <laughs> my town, my so, name. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll get to that story here in a little bit, guys. But first of all, let's start this morning with that very big moment for NASA that came 
from a very small helicopter. NASA's Ingu Ingenuity helicopter officially took flight over the surface of Mars. NASA's mini chopper became the first aircraft to achieve powered controlled flight on another planet. So this was the first flight and it was short and sweet, but the mini chopper you can see right there has already survived the freezing Martian nights after separating from the Perseverance rover. Scientists say having a bird's eye view of the ground could revolutionize the way we study new planets. What the Ingenuity team has done is given us the third dimension. They've freed us from the surface now forever in planetary exploration so that we can now make a combination, of course, of driving on the surface and doing reconnaissance on inaccessible places for a rover. So, of course, flying on Mars presented all kinds of engineering challenges, including the low gravity of the planet. But engineers sent a good luck charm along with them. Attached to the mini chopper is a piece of fabric from the wing of the Wright Brothers flyer, which carried out the first powered controlled flight right here on Earth. Pretty cool stuff there. All right, guys, now to some dramatic video out of India this morning that shows the moment a railroad worker risked his life to save a child who fell in front of an oncoming train. So this was in Mumbai over the weekend. The child is walking with his mom when he slips and falls. You can see that right there onto the tracks. The boy's mother is blind, so she was not able to go after him. You could see the train start to come around the corner and then that railroad worker just sprints towards the boy to lift him and himself onto the platform right there, right before the train gets there. That was three seconds that the worker got there before uh, the train did. So pretty good stuff there. Everyone was okay. The worker has been identified and he's been getting a lot of praise on social media for his brave action. Congratulations to that worker there and the true uh, heroic actions. All right, guys, speaking of protecting and also serving, an officer in Arkansas is proving this morning that age is indeed just a number. Meet Officer Elsie Buckshot Smith. Love that nickname there. Officer Smith is 91 years young and a proud member of the Camden Police Department. Smith has spent more time in law enforcement than many of the town's residents have been alive, 56 years in total. He was a sheriff's deputy for more than four decades and retired when he was 80 years old, but that lasted all of 30 days when he became a rookie officer in Camden. He said he loves to meet people and being part of a community. He also wants to be a role model for younger officers. I tell them all, this badge and gun don't make no police officer. You got to respect folks. I want to be treated right, and I figure you yeah. want to be treated right. There we go. Words of wisdom from Officer Smith. So what he does right now is he patrols neighborhoods, escorts school buses, and also escorts investigations. He'll turn 92 years old next month, and the town is planning a big parade. He says he'll retire when the good Lord says so. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff there. All right, guys, and finally this morning, here's your chance to buy an entire town, and it will only cost you $2.7 million. So the tiny town of Nipton, California, with a population of 25 people, is up for sale. So get this, the town was slated to become a cannabis consumption destination for people looking to get away, but the idea went bust and then the pandemic forced a foreclosure. So if you're still interested, after looking at this video, Nipton is uh, located in the California desert near Nevada, so it's a little bit closer to Vegas than LA. So David and Stephanie, after all this with the cannabis consumption, I guess it appears that the original idea has gone up in smoke. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I wow. know, and it is 420, by the way. Um, so, That's yeah, funny. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, that didn't look very appealing to me. No, he said 20, 25 residents? Uh, 25 residents. <laughs> I'll well, come with the town as well. Yeah, well, they, they may not like someone moving in. <laughs> Probably not as well, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. 2.7 million, though, that's what kind of... Uh, yeah, well, kind of I mean, work. you know. We We'd have to change the name of Nipton to... <laughs> RJ Town. <laughs> RJ Town, there you go. <laughs> that's a ring to it. Yeah. RJ Town, yeah. I like that. Thanks, RJ. Thanks, guys. It's 9-11, it's 62 degrees now. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, researchers got to see what daily life is like for a wolf through the animal's perspective with the help of a collar camera. So what does a wolf do all day? Details still ahead. And go Spurs go, the silver and black won their game last night against Indiana. That's two in a row. RJ back with a look at that game coming up. And one teen training next to heroes right here in Military City, USA, the opportunity that's helping him and the military facility here at home. And take a look at stocks. Ooh, a little down today. And it's Tuesday. It was down Monday, it's down Tuesday. What's going on? 
And welcome back, it's 915. It's a state-of-the-art rehabilitation center that serves amputees and burn victims in the military. But this time, the Center for the Intrepid at Brook Army Medical Center is helping a civilian, 18-year-old Noah Adams. If you followed his journey with us, you know he became an amputee due to cancer. His specific case, a first for the center. The night team's Myra Arthur explains the opportunity this presents for both Noah and the military center. Inspired and determined. Shift over. There is no stopping Noah Adams now. Noah recently received his prosthetic leg. I've been waiting for it for like six months. Six months ago, doctors performed a surgery that forever changed his life. A rotation plasty. A portion of his upper leg was removed. The lower portion was then rotated 180 degrees to form a functional knee joint, preserving mobility. That was the whole reason I got the surgery, you know, uh, no limits and not not letting things hold me back. He's now learning how to walk again with his new prosthetic, which also means learning how to dominate different terrains again. Fortunately, he's got the best of the best at the Center for the Intrepid. Normally, only wounded veterans and soldiers can get into the center. It's a huge honor. The best gift I could have received. A gift for Noah, but also an opportunity for the center to learn more about this type of amputation. It's obviously something that we don't see frequently. We need to be have the capabilities, have the skills, and have the knowledge to be able to rehab large numbers of patients. And NOAA just helps us um, solidify that knowledge and helps us exercise that knowledge so we're ready to go. The rehab team now focused on helping this teen take his next steps in life. With Noah in particular, it's more than physical therapy. It's integrating him into adaptive sports, uh, shooting, swimming, wave riding, um, the whole nine yards to try to improve his function. Improving his function is what will give Noah his independence back. It just makes me super excited for the future. He is an encouragement to our other patients and then hopefully vice versa uh, for a, an 18 year old student to be working out next to a Navy SEAL or a Green Beret who has been through a similar trauma, uh, I think is motivating. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. No talking about his future. He has two more chemo rounds left and then he's going to be going to the prom this weekend. And another moment that Noah is excited about. He will be the first in his graduating class to walk across the stage in May. Congratulations. Wow. That's awesome. That's that's a comeback there. Congratulations to him. All right. Look at that, 62. 62. We started off in the 50s and we're already in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. some places were in the 40s, guys. Uh, wow. it, was, it was a chilly start. It'll be even colder tomorrow. I'll warn you about that. But uh, first, let's take, a the, let's take a look at the big picture. And you can see there is snow on the map. It is late April, but snow is flying this morning across parts of Kansas and Missouri. Uh, some record-breaking cold in some cases. Uh, Texas is going to feel a little bit of that. We're not getting any snow in the Lone Star State, but it does come as close as northern parts of Oklahoma. And you look at the numbers, 31 Amarillo, 34 Lubbock. There's our front. Should be here by dinner time. Once it moves through, you'll know it. Winds will pick up. They'll be howling tonight, gusts 30 to 35, and it will allow temperatures to really fall off. Right now we're at 61. Out ahead of the front, we're actually going to see some pretty warm temperatures this afternoon. There's a look at some of the wind gusts, gusting at 32 in Lubbock, 30 in Abilene, 20 in Dallas. I'll show you this because this is what we have to look forward to. Uh, gusts again, somewhere in that range, 30 to 35. Outside right now, clear skies. It's really nice, 61 degrees at the airport. West northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. We've warmed into the 60s across most of Bear County, but you're seeing some 50s up there in the hills, 55 Bandera, 56 in Kerrville. For our southeastern counties, you're in the low to mid 60s right now and then out west 61 currently in Del Rio. Everyone's seeing cloudless skies. You look at the numbers today, pretty toasty 89 Catula, 89 Carrizo Springs, 83 in Gonzales. We'll be in the mid 80s here in San Antonio. This is five o'clock this afternoon, but our front comes through just after that time frame. And by seven o'clock tomorrow morning, we're at 45, 41 Kerrville, 40 in Fredericksburg. So yes, there could be some 30s in the hill country. And with gusty north winds, there's likely going to be a wind chill that we'll contend with tomorrow morning. It does, uh, the, the, the numbers do recover some tomorrow afternoon, 71 for a high, but cooler than today. The wind gust forecast, we mentioned this, but uh, mainly I'd say about 10 o'clock to about 7 a.m. tomorrow morning is when we will see our strongest winds and gusts 
uh, here in San Antonio. As far as rain goes, I wish we get some rain with this front. Not going to happen. It's uh, just too dry out there. So this comes free through with just a few clouds. As we get into uh, tomorrow afternoon, We'll go partly cloudy and then moisture really starts to return on Thursday. This is Thursday morning. We'll start to introduce some rain chances, just some light showers. That'll be the case through most of the day on Thursday. By Friday, storm system moves in and this looks promising for at least a few thunderstorms to develop. And we're going to have to watch it because if the timing works out, if it's coming through during the afternoon, we could see some stronger thunderstorms during the heating of the day. So that'll be a time frame to watch for sure. Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Uh, we have about a 40% chance of showers and storms. 71 tomorrow, 65 Thursday, 80 on Friday with that 40% chance of storms, but it does clear out for the weekend. 85 Saturday, 86 Sunday, lots of sun over the weekend, a little warm. Uh, but get ready for those changes tonight, guys. It will cool down significantly by tomorrow morning. We'll be prepared. Thank you, Justin. And time now is 921 and about 62 degrees. So what does a wolf do all day? Researchers were able to observe its daily life through a camera collar. You're not going to believe what was caught on camera. Coming up next. And welcome back. It's about 925 now. Researchers got to see what daily life is like for a wolf through the animal's perspective. CNN's Ginny Most shows us some of the most interesting things they saw through a collar cam. We know wolves don't sit around howling all day. But what do wolves do besides fend off black bears to protect their cubs? Now, thanks to the wolf collar cam, we get a wolf's eye view. Researchers at Voyageurs National Park in Minnesota fastened a collar cam on a lone wolf they'd trapped and sedated. And off he went. The big highlight for us was watching the wolf uh, catch fish. Wolves have been caught on camera fishing, but watching one fish, from his perspective, catching several spawning suckers was a thrill for researchers. Another highlight? The Voyageurs Wolf Project tracked this young male for six weeks, watching him watching crows up in the sky. The camera collar was made by a German company that even makes them extra, extra, extra large for elephants. The wolf cam was programmed to fall off, detach on a specific date, and GPS enabled researchers to retrieve it. What's Tom Gable's favorite oddball tidbit about the secret lives of wolves? Wolves in our area eat a lot of blueberries. Not only do they eat them, they sometimes regurgitate them for their cubs to eat. Talk about recycling. The wolf cam collar captured a lot of sleeping and things were constantly hairy, whether dry or dripping wet. The lens was covered in hair. As one viewer noted, I feel so close to this wolf. I like sushi, I run in the woods and my beard needs a trim, which is what the researchers plan to do the next time they use a wolf collar cam. Yeah, so what we'll probably do is trim back that hair. Keep your paws off my coat. A haircut's enough to make a lone wolf howl. Ginny Mo, CNN, New York. That's interesting. Can't cut the hair. The hair adds to it. Yeah. Part of the whole. I think so. Viewing experience. Yeah, but and didn't we learn not to touch wildlife? Yes. Uh, yeah, be careful out there. <laughs> yeah, especially those wolves. <laughs> Still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A vintage plane splashes down near Affordable Beach and a guy on a tractor helps end a wild police chase. Coming up in the days, take a look at this. A dog rescued from a coyote trap in San Antonio now searching for her forever home. Our Eric Hernandez will explain what you need to do if you want to adopt the pup. And the Spurs beat the Pacers. Highlights and who was the star of last night's game coming up. Welcome back. It's about 9.31. The Spurs have now won back-to-back -back games after another road win against Indiana. Whoa, RJ's back. We've 
going to break down the Spurs win last yes. night. So, so yeah. we were just talking. Very excited. Hmm? The advice for the Spurs is just stay on the road. Aww. Might as well, right? <laughs> yes. Um, that, that's been one of the weirdest things about this season. The Spurs improved to 16-10 and 10 on yeah. the road, 12-18 and 18 here at yeah. home. It really has been a, kind of an interesting sort of turnaround for them. Uh, and, again, I, this is a question. I don't know. Will the real Spurs please stand up? Because I have no idea who this team is. They sat guys the other day, beat up on Phoenix, one of the best teams, and uh, taking on Indiana here on the road and uh, this was big though right here Derek White uh, big thing about here with Derek he's averaging now 18 points per game in April so Derek hitting his stride a little bit remember earlier this year had a bit of a stop and start season the toe got COVID but uh, good to see Derek rolling here uh, in general just the team rolling in general look at this right play right here I know David Loves this. Yaka Pertle running the break. David and Justin, got to love this. Yaka. What do you think <laughs> of Jakob's uh, point guard skills there, David? Hey, dude can dribble. <laughs> yes, he can dribble. Um, all right, so here was the other sort of uh, highlight of the uh -huh. game. Spurs were up by about 20 the entire second half, and then we had a little scuffle Ooh. here breakout. Who, I uh -oh. mean, who wants to go after Patty Mills? I know. That's all I got to say. Who would be going after Patty here? Rude. Okay, look this up a second ago. Okay, so this guy, Jakar Sampson, mm -hmm. uh -huh. he's 6'7". Uh -huh. He's listed at 214. Looks a little heavier than that. Mm -hmm. Patty Mills is 6'1 at 180. <laughs> so, yeah. But Patty Mills stood his ground. Yes, man. he did. Right that's in, what I loved he about it. Took Patty. that head butt and kept moving. Yes, that's what I loved about it. Patty did not definitely take a step back. And then we saw earlier Rudy Gay kind of get in there. Now, Rudy Gay, that's a yeah, big well, dude. Yeah, it. Rudy Gay, you don't want to mess with. That's nah, what they were saying after dude. the game. But uh, uh, Spurs take care of business here on the road. Big win here, 109 to 94. They improved to 28 and 28. So back to 500, still in that uh, contention for the play-in round. So let's go ahead and hear from Jakob Pertl on that Fast break play and Derek White on this win. Ball was right in front of me. I figured I might as well bring it up. There was, there's nobody really stopping the ball. So I figured, yeah, might as well keep it going. And then I, I saw Kelton ahead of me. I was very happy that he gave it back to me. And definitely two big wins for us. We always seem to play a little better on the road for some reason, but um, good wins for us. And we just got momentum going and um, not let up. I mean, season's dwindling down. So we just got to keep battling and try to play our best basketball down the stretch. Yeah, the season is certainly dwindling down. I think we counted earlier with 16 games left, David. What are, you, what are your thoughts here as the Spurs do return home? Unfortunately, they, they do have home games. I, I <laughs> really, just go up to San Marcos or Austin or someplace. There, yeah. you know, fans can still well, get there, but don't, don't come home. Yeah, like the, the Combo Center maybe. Yeah. Like the Raptors, right. they haven't played at home. And, yeah. you yeah. know, maybe we go. can make an arrangement yeah. for our yeah. Spurs. Yeah, Although, definitely. you know, we, we love to have you guys That's at a nice home. nice arena in Corpus or something, didn't they? Where can they go? <laughs> um, it, it really is one of the stranger things throughout the season. Of course, they there were no fans for a while and then limited fans now. But uh, that is the next home game on the schedule here. Spurs taking on the Miami Heat. A pretty solid Miami Heat team. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, one of the better names there in the NBA, uh, taking on the Spurs. And look, the Spurs right now, pretty much every game, every game is a almost a must win, I would say, even though uh, New Orleans is kind of falling behind in the standings. But uh, San Antonio looking to take care of business here. And uh, don't mess with Patty Mills. That's it. No. Just, yeah. just protect Patty at all costs. Yeah. That's all we want. I, I don't know what yeah, Samson we, was thinking. but Leave Patty alone. What was he thinking there? Yeah, know, guys. Know, don't, don't cut your hair, Samson. <laughs> <laughs> nice win for the Spurs there. Yeah. Um, and the top four or the bottom four teams, mm -hmm. does it really matter? Where you end up in that in that? Well, it, it does because if you're in the seventh spot or the eighth spot, you only need to win one game in order to get to the full playoffs. So the ninth and tenth teams, which is right now Golden State and San Antonio, they would have to win two games to get in. I still would not want to play Golden State no. if I'm in that mix there. Not with I what uh, Steph Curry has been doing. So I yeah. Spurs struggle against all three of those teams though. They have Golden State, Memphis. Okay, got, Remember well, the Memphis back to back. That was a tough day. And then the, yes. and then the, uh, I hate to all those up, home but, games, all yeah. those home games coming back. But, but can we play them like not at home, maybe? I, that's true. They would be on the road. <laughs> Neutral yeah. site. Good call. Yeah. Stephanie's on it. I think I'll just move around yeah. Texas. <laughs> move around Texas. <laughs> not like on tour. Yeah, yeah on just tour. go to Austin and Corpus yeah. and El Paso, play a game in Midland or something, you know. Sure. But Spurs heat tomorrow at yeah. the AT&T Center. All, All right. right. Either way, go Spurs go. Thank you, RJ. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. We are at 64 degrees right now. It's warming up a little bit, Justin. Maybe we could just switch the scoreboard. Were they, they're the away team? Maybe yeah. Oh, yeah. Make a difference. Well, we'll take it. Something. Uh, we've been watching 
the aquifer, it's dropping even more. At last check, it's down 648.8, so that puts us squarely in stage two restrictions. We've talked about it last couple days. We're now officially there. Uh, it's still watering once a week based on your address. You can find out more at ksat.com. But uh, we need some rain. There is some in the forecast right now. We're predicting a 20% chance on Thursday, 40% chance of showers and storms on Friday. And as we look at temperatures across the state, it's cold up in the Panhandle. Cold front headed our way. And look at the numbers behind that. 19 in Denver right now, 19 in Casper. It is late April, but those are the numbers we're looking at. It's an unusual cold snap here. And we're going to feel a little bit of it here tomorrow morning, but not before we hit the mid 80s this afternoon. Mostly sunny southwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. That cold front expected right around dinner time tonight. We'll tell you what effect that has on our forecast and another look at that chance for storms on Friday. Coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transkai, we're looking at I-10 and Callahan, and the sun is shining. It's a great Tuesday morning. And San Antonio Zoo is working on a new attraction. A dog is looking for a new home and some new park amenities, and the trails have opened in San Antonio. The stories and more trending on KSAT.com this morning. Our Erica Nettis joins us now to explain all of that this morning. Good morning. Hey, guys. Good morning. Well, it's something that's been talked about for a while now at the zoo, but it's now becoming reality. The zoo will break ground, uh, well, actually broke ground on the Jaguar Skywalk yesterday, which says it will be the first of its kind in the United States and will provide an aerial view of the Jaguars. This new, more extensive habitat will provide enough space for the zoo's two Jaguars to coexist and be visible to the public. The new area will also provide multiple terrain options for the animals that closely match their native surroundings. The zoo says the exhibit is expected to be complete by this fall, so by the end of this year, we'll be able to see this at the zoo. How cool is that? That's very cool. It's hard to to visualize. I mean, I know the renderings right there, but we just went to the zoo last week, and yeah, that would be pretty neat to it's see. It's yeah. them walk above you yeah. like that. Maybe they'll put a collar cam on the Jaguar. We can watch him walk across. <laughs> there the you go. Maybe that's something we can look forward to at the end of the year. That'll probably be step two. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next up, if you're looking to adopt a dog, you may want to give Shelby a chance. Shelby, a one-year-old shepherd mix, was rescued and brought to the San Antonio Humane Society last month in bad shape. She was first spotted by a good Samaritan when she got caught in a coyote trap, but ran off before she could be helped. Three days later, she was found again, but in worse shape. It appears in disturbing detail that she had chewed off her leg in order to free herself after multiple surgical procedures, nourishment, and care. Shelby is healing well and looking for a new home. She is thriving and looking for a home with a doggy playmate about her size or smaller. We have a link up now with more information if you are interested in adopting. Look how cute she is. I know. I poor mean, Shelby. I know. She's been through a lot, but she's ready to go and she's ready to find a new family. Well, she looks adorable, so I'm sure people will start calling. Oh, I'm sure. And finally, just in time for spring and summer outings, a variety of new park amenities and trails have opened here in San Antonio. The first one to mention is the new Skywalk at Phil Harburger Park. It opened last month and the walkway climbs 18 feet off the ground and connects people to the top of the Robert L.B. Tobin Land Bridge. In downtown, a new one-acre dog park has opened at Maverick Park. It includes sections for both large and small dogs. We have a full list up of more places to visit that has either new amenities or trail segments to explore. I haven't been out there yet. I don't know if y'all been out to Philbar Harbor no, Park yet. To check out yet. the skywalk. Not, not this part. Yeah, that, I bet it looks cool. I haven't seen it yet, but with They're temperatures the warming list. up, people are ready to get outside. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, you know, hanging out in the house too long. Yeah. Yep. And it's nice weather right now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. National Days of the Week. Today is Cheddar Fries Day. Mm -hmm. Wednesday is Administrative Professionals Day and National Banana Day. Thursday is Earth Day. Friday is National Picnic Day. Saturday is Pigs in a Blanket Day. And Sunday is World Penguin Day. Day. Why World Penguin Day? Why, why not just Penguin Day? <laughs> like, I mean, we uh, celebrate them all over the world. Oh, not I guess just not just San Antonio Penguin Day. Yeah. We can't go to SeaWorld and just have right. our own. <laughs> you got to go all over the world. All over, all over the, the world. world. So there'll be penguins celebrating everywhere. All dressed They're already up. dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> the champagne. Good. There you go. <laughs> all fancy. <Perfect>. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. They're always ready for a party. <laughs> and you're watching GMSA at 9. Our Rhode Island barber stepping in to help out. Now he's helping the homeless community. We got that story for you coming up next. And welcome back. It's 944. A day at the beach was the scene of a sudden emergency landing that involved a World War II era bomber plane. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that and more in today's Take a Look at This. 
Fun in the sun on a Florida beach turned surreal and sobering when a vintage airplane crash landed in the shallow surf. Oh, God. The World War II era plane, which was part of a nearby air show, reportedly experienced an engine failure, forcing the pilot to put her down in the water. Thankfully, no one was injured, including the pilot who waved at onlookers after the sudden splashdown. The vintage plane, a TBM Avenger, wasn't so lucky. Officials say it may take several years to rebuild the damaged aircraft. Watch a man on a tractor help end a wild police chase in North Carolina. Buzz Palmer was on the tractor when the chase came roaring down his driveway. This former volunteer law enforcement diver wasted no time switching to high gear. I was going to T-bone him. I just had to rodeo him up to keep him, you know, going. Palmer helped corral the vehicle until it had nowhere to go, and after it crashed into a pond, police were able to move in and arrest the suspects. Sometimes you just got to step in. A Rhode Island barber is stepping in to help out by offering members of the local homeless community free haircuts. Once a week, barber Jason Ball works with a local nonprofit offering those in need a fresh cut and a sympathetic ear. I, I do a lot of listening. You might be surprised how a new do can work wonders, but Ball's gesture is about building bonds and restoring dignity. In that one minute when they're looking in the mirror, they're, they're a new person and they, they forget about their problems. They, they feel better about themselves. For take a look at this, I'm Jeremy Roth. Some sharp looking dudes there. Yeah, pretty cool. I like yeah. that he's also a sounding board yeah, as well. Exactly. It works out. 65, is that correct? Uh, 65. Yeah. 65. It, it warmed that what up. You said? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. It, it warmed up pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. It, it is warming up fast, and we're going to see some warm temperatures this afternoon with lots of sun out there. We look live outside right now, and uh, sun in full force. Uh, driving up those temperatures from the 40s earlier now into the 60s, technically 61 at the airport, but it looks like we're already uh, warming up and we may be in the 70s here fairly soon. 63 Bernie Stage, 54 Comfort, 59 Kerrville, 59 Kenyon Lake, 59 right now in Hondo, 66 Carrizo Springs and 61 right now in Del Rio. It's a very comfortable morning. Temperatures will get into the 80s later today, so this is Probably one of our warmest days here in the seven day forecast, mid 80s here in town. We'll get close to 90 in a few spots. Now in the hill country, a little cooler, that front uh, that is going to start to interact a little earlier, and that'll bring temperatures down some there. But we expect that front through San Antonio sometime around dinner time, and then by tomorrow morning, we're in the 40s with gusty winds and a wind chill. Uh, so you, you'll want the jacket tomorrow for sure. You may not need it all day, 71 tomorrow afternoon, a little cooler than uh, today, even during the afternoon hours. As far as the dew point is concerned, uh, it's fairly dry out there right now. It gets even drier behind the front, but moisture quickly returns on Thursday. And then by Friday, we've got dew points in the 70s. That sets the stage for some showers and storms. It's not a slam dunk yet but I think we have a decent shot at some rain. Hopefully we don't get a lot of severe weather. Uh, there is our front that we've been talking about all morning. Now through Abilene, also through Midland, starting to uh, advance south towards San Angelo. And it'll slow down a little bit this afternoon, but then pick up speed again this evening and uh, push through the area tonight. Uh, behind it, gusty winds, gust to 30, 35 miles per hour. That's what we have to look forward to. You'll see those strong winds generally from about 7 p.m. tonight through about 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, is when it will be at its windiest. It doesn't bring us any rain, though. This front is dry because you saw the dew points. They're so dry, just nothing to work with. But as that moisture return gets underway on Thursday, we will start to see a couple of showers. I think there's about a 20% chance of some showers Thursday afternoon. And then by Friday, here comes our storm system. Again, this is not a slam dunk as far as rain goes, but I'm feeling encouraged here. Uh, because th if the timing works out right, we will get some showers and storms. And uh, unfortunately, that may come with a little bit of severe weather. Storm Prediction Center is kind of already highlighting this area, about a 15% chance of seeing some stronger storms with this as it moves through. Uh, just something that we need to watch. As we get closer, we'll really be able to kind of iron out that timing. 71 tomorrow after starting off at 45, 65 Thursday, 20% chance of rain. Cloudy skies for the most part on Thursday. Mostly cloudy Friday. Right now we have a 40% chance of showers and storms. And that may continue into Friday night, but most of the weekend will be very nice. 85 Saturday, 86 Sunday, some warm days uh, with some drier air uh, over the weekend, guys. Looks nice over the weekend. Thank yep. you, Justin.
Once again, 65 and 949. We'll be right back. Hey there, coming up on live, Andre Day from the United States versus Billy Holiday, plus how to throw a virtual Oscar party. We'll see you soon here on live. And coming up today at noon, the winners of the Luminaria Artist Foundation Grants program are being announced today. The prices will win and why the program is beneficial to local artists. And if you like sweets, do that. You may want to tune in to SA Live today. The 2D Pie Company is having its grand opening of its new building in Bernie. Jim Tobias Trusky from SA Live is going to be there for the ribbon cutting. 2D Pie Company is known for their original six pound apple pies. Ooh. Some bakers from the 2D Pie Company are going to demonstrate how a few of their recipes are made. That's today on SA Live. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, join us for another Katie's Science Lab experiment. Ahead of Earth Day, we're going to make bird feeders out of milk jugs. So here's what you're going to need. Plastic milk jug, check. Scissors, check. Wire or rope. Uh, bird seed, markers, paint or stickers. And that's tomorrow right here on GMSA at 9. Looking forward to that. Building a birdhouse. Well, good. You still going to be an assistant? I was going to say, are you going to wear a lab coat tomorrow? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Not We're for the two whole hats. Show, but I'll, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, tune in tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure she could handle it without an assistant, but you know, you never know. There may be something happened, and she's going to need. She's going to need sure. help. All right. <laughs> Look, things looking good outside with Transguide this morning. And full sun out there right now. We're sitting at 67, so temperatures are warming up quickly. We'll be up around 84. Windy though this evening as the front comes through. Much cooler tomorrow morning. 45, 71 tomorrow afternoon, and some chances of rain to finish out the work week. And you may have heard, I don't know, was it earlier this year, maybe the end of last year, famous Texan and famous actor Matthew McConaughey started talking about the possibility of running for governor yeah. of his home state of Texas. Well, apparently a lot of people are about this idea. Uh, so again, the star of the Dallas Buyers Club, which is our Matthew McConaughey, uh, he, he has some support for governor. So this is according to a poll by the Dallas Morning News and the University of Texas at Tyler. All right, so in a hypothetical contest, McConaughey garners 45%. Abbott gets 33%, 22% say they would vote for someone else. That is according to this Dallas Morning News, University of Texas at Tyler poll. Yeah, the poll was conducted April 6th through the 13th and comprised 37% self-identifying Republicans, 30% Democrats, and 33% with no party affiliation. The poll surveyed 1,126 registered voters and has a margin of error of plus or minus 2.92 percentage points. And they break it down even more among Republicans. Mm -hmm. The poll showed that 50% of the respondents approve of the way Abbott is handling, is handling his job as governor. 36% disapprove, 15 say neither. And then on the Democratic side of the respondents, 66% of whom chose McConaughey over the other two possibilities, 44% of independents and 30% of Republicans say they like the possibility of yeah. McConaughey. So he actually told the American statesman in March that yeah. he had gone so far as to, not gone so far as to consider which party, but that he would affiliate with in a gubernatorial run, but he made clear that his politics where his view was in the middle. Yeah, his quote is, I'm a meet you in the middle, man. <laughs>